I'm not ashamed. What did Jesus do for his mother while dying on the cross? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of John on Walking Through the Bible. If you have a Bible with you, turn to John chapter 19. We're going to be reading from verses 25 to 30. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So John chapter 19, beginning of verse 25. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on hyssop, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Jesus is now on the cross paying the price for the sins of mankind. The sign above his head identifies him as the king of the Jews, though the Jews wanted Pilate to change it, a request that Pilate refused. Jesus' clothing had been divided among the soldiers, and his most valuable piece of clothing, his tunic, was gambled over, because the soldiers didn't want to tear it. As for the crucifixion itself, John leaves out the darkness that fell over the land from noon to three in the afternoon, the mocking of the chief priests, the cry of Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani by Jesus, and the conversion of one of the thieves crucified next to Jesus. What John does do, though, is show us the compassion and concern that Jesus had for his mother, even while dying on the cross. Standing by the cross were three women. The first was Mary, the mother of Jesus. We last saw her in this book in John 2 at the wedding feast in Cana. So Jesus' mother was there at the beginning when he performed his first miracle, and she was there at the end to witness her son's death. We also have mentioned that Mary's sister or kinsman was there and is identified as Mary the wife of Clopas. From the other gospel accounts, it appears that Clopas and Alphaeus are the same person, meaning that this Mary is the mother of James the Less, one of Jesus' apostles, and Joseph. The final Mary is Mary Magdalene, who Mark 16 verse 9 tells us was a woman out of whom Jesus had cast out seven demons. That it was largely Jesus' female disciples who were here, and not many of the men, showed their devotion to Jesus, while at the same time showing the utter despair that many of the other disciples were suffering through by not being present. The Apostle John, though, was the only one of the twelve present. Peter had gone out having wept bitterly for denying Jesus the night before. Judas was dead having killed himself for betraying Jesus. Only John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was there with the women witnessing Jesus' agony. At first, Jesus turns to his mother and says, Woman, behold thy son. By using the term woman here, Jesus was not being disrespectful. Jesus was treating her honorably. Jesus had brought, G Mary had brought Jesus into this world. She raised him and she believed in him and his mission. Yet I'm sure she was in grief at the sight of Jesus dying. It had been prophesied in Luke 2.35 by Simeon at the temple that a sword will pierce through his, her soul too. It could very well be that Jesus was pointing her to that. But it also could be that Jesus was trying to comfort her and strengthen her faith in what he was doing and the necessity of it. Mary would see Jesus raised from the dead and be with the disciples in Acts 1 as numbered among the 120 disciples there. Mary was a woman of faith, even through sorrow. But Jesus, though, wasn't just concerned with his mother's spiritual well-being, but her physical well-being, too. He thus turned to the disciple whom he loved, John, and told him, Behold thy mother. In saying this, Jesus is confirming that his father, Joseph, was dead by that time because Jesus was asking John to care for his mother, who would have been likely in her fifties by then. Why couldn't Jesus' brothers take care of Mary? because at that time they were unbelievers, and so Jesus, as Mary's oldest son, wanted her taken care of by someone who followed God's will. Jesus never stopped caring, even in death, and that's a lesson we need to learn and take to heart. After all these things, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that his mission was complete, 
and he had suffered enough, prepared to die. However, there was still more scripture to fulfill. Psalm 69, 21 said that they gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. So he cried out, I thirst. Sour wine was present among the soldiers, so they filled a sponge, put it on hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished, bowed his head, and gave up his spirit, and died. When Jesus said, It is finished, what did he mean? Everything he came to do had been accomplished. He had revealed the Father to mankind and prepared his disciples for their mission. He had fulfilled all scripture concerning the Messiah. He had paid the price for sins by dying on the cross. There was nothing left for him to do but die. In giving up his spirit, that means that his spirit left his body, and his body hung there lifeless. You see, what makes us alive is not our brain, our heart, or our lungs. Yes, those are, what, those are things that keep us alive. But what makes us alive, though, is the presence of our spirit, our inner being that lives on after death. Ecclesiastes 12, 7 says, When speaking of death, then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. Jesus didn't return to heaven upon death, for he will make that abundantly clear in chapter 20. But his spirit returned to the care of God, and God placed it in paradise, the Hadean realm of the dead, awaiting resurrection. We'll conclude with what happened after Jesus' death, but before burial, the Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of John chapter 19, verses 31 to 42, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.